There are several factors which can impact the therapeutic efficacy of a drug, such as pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics refers to the biochemical processes a drug undergoes within the body, from its administration to its excretion. These can be divided into the following four stages – absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. This video will focus on absorption. Absorption refers to the transportation of a drug from its site of administration to the systemic circulation. When a drug is administered orally, it is first dissolved into smaller molecules in the stomach acid. The molecules are then transported into the small intestine, where absorption takes place. The intestinal wall is comprised of numerous villi, which increase its surface area. Each of these villi consist of epithelial cells that have their own microvilli across the surface of their apical membrane. One of the ways a drug can be transported into the villi to be absorbed into the bloodstream and reach its site of action is by passing through the intercellular spaces between epithelial cells. This is referred to as paracellular transport. For paracellular transport to occur, the compound needs to be small and polar. Another way a drug can be transported is by passing through the cell membrane of the epithelial cells, known as transcellular transport. The cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer, a thin polar membrane made of two layers of lipid molecules that acts as a barrier and selectively controls the passage of certain substances into and out of the cells. To successfully pass through the bilayer, a compound needs to have the right chemical properties. Molecules that have the affinity for a lipid environment can be concentrated within the cell membrane due to its lipophilic nature. By being sequestered within the cell membrane, lipophilic molecules can enhance toxicity by interacting with several signaling systems of the cell membrane. Meanwhile, charged molecules, as opposed to neutral molecules, are unfavored and therefore unable to pass through the membrane. There are five modes by which a compound can be transported across this biological barrier. Some of these are passive diffusion, active transport, and endocytosis with the most common mode of transport being passive diffusion. Passive diffusion occurs when the molecules move down their concentration gradient, from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration, without requiring energy. To do so, the molecules must first pass through the apical lipid bilayer, move through the cytoplasm, and then exit via the basolateral membrane of the epithelial cells. In some cases, however, compounds are transported through the cell membrane against a concentration gradient by efflux transport proteins, which are located on the apical surface of the epithelial cells to protect the body from such xenobiotics, an action which requires an abundance of energy. The P-glycoprotein efflux proteins, for example, can act upon various substrates to prevent their permeability to cross the bilayer and hence decrease their passage from the GI tract into the systemic circulation by transporting them back into the intestinal lumen. Once a compound manages to pass through the epithelial cell membranes of the intestinal lining and the endothelial cell membranes of the blood capillaries within the intestinal villi, it enters the bloodstream so it can be transported to the liver via the hepatic portal vein. While in the liver, the compound can be metabolized by the hepatic cells before it can enter the systemic circulation.